everyone, it's Nadia from Yarn Utopia. Today we're making this adorable hat. We are using uh, the Yarn Dare Moore's Studio Anti-Peeling Chunky Yarn today. I am going to demonstrate this uh, hat using these two colors uh, in this tutorial today. Uh, this color is going to be the top color, the main color, uh, and this one is called Cornflower, okay? And this is a chunky or bulky sized yarn. And these balls come in 87 yards. The second color I am using is called Jade. And again, the same 87 yards. You're going to need one skein of both colors because as you can see over here, I only had this much left of the yarn in each color. So you're going to definitely need two skeins of yarn. You can use any colors you want. Um, this hat that I already made, um, I used the color Taupe for this color here and then as you can see right there and then the second color mustard is this yellow tone color okay so that's for this hat um, that I already made you can see we made a uh, palm and some tassels on the side so this is perfect for any toddler uh, you can use it make it for boys and girls and this hat uh, we are using herringbone half double crochet stitches uh, for this top part and then for this bottom part here we are using we're making a different stitch that I've actually never done before it's a it's a spin-off of a single crochet stitch and uh, we are working in two stitches it's almost like a crisscross single crochet stitch and I'll show you how to do that uh, it's really interesting so we are doing that and we're making ear flaps and we have the tassels down here so it's a lot of fun to make uh, some things um, that are a little different and it's chunky and perfect for the cold weather coming up very soon and uh, you're going to need also an eye sized hook which is five and a half millimeters you could go up to a six millimeter hook which is a J hook uh, if your tension is a little tighter but this we want it to be a tight stitch because uh, it will be warmer in the winter so this is an eye hook and this fancy hook I got at the Etsy shop would be fancy they have a uh, hand carved wooden hooks, um, wooden handled hooks that are ergonomic so they're really nice to hold and um, use especially if you crochet for really long periods of time so this is a really nice hook. I will put the link to the shop in the description of this video and I always said in the other videos I've had that the holidays are right around the corner and these would be a great gift to give somebody who loves to crochet so I'll put that link in there. Also you're going to need a scissors, a yarn needle, and some pieces of cardboard. If you have a legit um, palm maker you can use that otherwise just cut two pieces of cardboard this like this in circles and then a circle inside and I'll show you later in this tutorial on how to make a palm and then a square piece of uh, cardboard you're going to need to make the tassels um, this one is about I would say three and a half inches almost four inches wide and tall so just a square uh, piece of cardboard so that is um, for the tassels and then this one is for the palms so those are all the supplies you're going to need. Now before we begin making this hat, I have to mention, like I said earlier, the links in the description of this video, if you're watching this on YouTube, there is a link to the written pattern for this hat for free on my website. And then also there's a link to uh, the kit for um, the yarn, if you want to get the yarn at Dara Moore's website, you can get that. And then also there's links to all the rest of these supplies if you want to get the supplies to make this uh, hat you can get the supplies by clicking the links in the description of this video also there's a link to my Facebook Instagram snapchat and all that good stuff so make sure you follow me on social media and if you make this hat be sure to share your photos I would absolutely love to see your pictures of this hat so uh, those are all the information I need to give you and I have a few tassels in here I need to so in but I'll do that off camera so let's just uh, cut this and get to making this cute little hat all right I'm gonna start out with the color cornflower it's the lighter blue almost like a sky blue color and it sort of matches my nail polish <laughs> so we're going to start off with a slip knot put your short end over your long end then fold this down and then pull your long end through and pull tight and there's your slip knot and then you can insert your hook 
and we can begin. So let's start out by chaining three. So yarn over and pull through. One, yarn over, pull through, two, and three. And now in the third chain from the hook, we are going to put nine herringbone half double crochet stitches. Okay, so the loop on the hook doesn't count as a chain. So count one, two, and three. This chain right here where I'm holding, we're going to yarn over, go into that chain, then yarn over and pull through, and pull through the first loop on your hook. So now we have two loops on the hook, yarn over and pull through both of those loops. And that is called a herringbone half double crochet. It'll give a good effect uh, later on in this pattern. So we had put nine of those in that same chain. So that was one. So yarn over again, go back into that chain, then yarn over and pull through, and pull through the first loop on your hook. Okay, then yarn over and pull through those other two loops on your hook. There's two. Yarn over, go back in, yarn over, pull through, and pull through the loop on your hook, and then yarn over and pull through those last two loops on your hook. Again, yarn over, go in, yarn over, pull through that and the first loop on your hook, and then yarn over and pull through those other two loops. So that's uh, one, two, three, four. Here's five. And six. Seven. Eight. You can see I'm working in a circular form as well, so I'm working around, kind of turning this as I go. And one more, nine. All right, now we need to count back nine. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. And go into this stitch right here and slip stitch. So go in, yarn over, pull through, and pull through. Okay, just like that. Now that slip stitch doesn't count as anything, but we're, what we're gonna do now is go on to round two. We're gonna chain up one, and turn the work around, so flip it around, okay? And we're going to work in this stitch first right here, okay? We're going to put two herringbone half double crochets into each stitch around. So yarn over, go into this stitch right here, yarn over, pull through, and pull through the first loop on your hook, and then yarn over and pull through those other two loops. So there's one, yarn over, go back into that same stitch, Yarn over and pull through, and pull through that loop on your hook, the first loop right there. Then yarn over and pull through those other two loops. So there's two. So there's two herringbone half double crochets in that same stitch. Hop to the next stitch and do the same thing. And just do the same thing in every stitch around. Just putting two herringbone half double crochets in each stitch. At the end of round two, you should have 18 herringbone half double crochets. So I'm going to do that all the way around. I'll meet you up though when I show, because I want to show you my last stitch because it can get hidden. So I'm going to do this and then I'll meet you up at the end of round two. Okay, when you're finishing round two, it may look like your round is done because this stitch looks like it's worked in because there's our chain one right there. If you flip this forward, you can see our chain one right there. But this stitch actually has not been worked in yet. You can see our slip stitches in there when we closed the last round. And then our chain one is right there. So what we have to do still is work in this last stitch right here. So make sure you put your last two in here. And that's for every round. Make sure that you do not miss this stitch because otherwise you're going to end up with two, two less of stitches and um, then it it's not going to turn out. So you want to make sure that on round two you have your 18 stitches around. And then if you need to, count back 18 and it should be right in this stitch right here. We're going to go into that stitch to slip stitch and close this round. So go in, yarn over, pull through, and pull through. And you should have the 18 stitches. Now we're going to chain up one and turn the work around and go on to round three. Okay, so we're going to work in this stitch right here first, 
and then every stitch around, but do not forget to work in this stitch at the end. So for round three, we are going to put two herringbone half double crochets in this first stitch right here. So one and two. And then we're just going to put one herringbone half double crochet in the next stitch here. So just yarn over, go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, and pull through the first loop, and then yarn over and pull through those other two loops, okay? And that's the repeat all the way around. So the next stitch right here, we're going to put two herringbone half double crochet stitches, one and two. Okay, and then the next stitch we're just going to put one herringbone half double crochet stitch, just like that. And then just repeat, two in the next, and then one in the next. So at the end of round three, you're going to have 27 herringbone half double crochets. So I'll meet you up at the end of this round, and uh, we'll finish round three, and then we'll go on to round four. All right, so you can see here I have the two stitches left. It actually looks like I only have this one stitch left, but like I showed you in round two, this is still not worked in. So make sure your last repeat, you have two herringbone half double crochets in this stitch that looks like the last stitch. And then just don't forget to put your last stitch in this stitch right here where your slip stitch and chain one are. Okay, just don't forget that. And if you need to, you can count back to make sure that you have your 27 stitches on round three. And then count back, make sure to count all the way back and go right into this first stitch right here. Okay, and slip stitch, so yarn over, pull through, and through. We can go on to round four now. Let's chain up one and turn the work around. Okay. And now we are going to increase again. Let's start in this stitch right here. And we're going to put two herringbone half double crochets in there. So one and two. And then we're just going to put one herringbone half double crochet in the next two stitches. So yarn over, go into this next one here, make your herringbone half double crochet stitch and then the next stitch as well. Yarn over, go in, yarn over, pull through and through that first loop, and then yarn over and pull through those other two loops. And there's your repeat. So put two herringbone half double crochets in the next stitch, one and two, and then one herringbone half double crochet in the next two stitches. So one and next stitch, one and then just repeat that. So do that all the way around. For round four, we are going to have 36 herringbone half double crochet stitches. So I will do that and then I'll meet you up. We'll finish round four and go on to round five. All right, just finishing this round. I have to finish my last repeat here. So I have two uh, herringbone half double crochets in this stitch and then we have two stitches left. You can see that one doesn't look like it's a stitch, but it is. So we're going to herringbone half double crochet in this stitch, and then just add a herringbone half double crochet in that very last stitch right here. Okay, so like I said, you should have your 36 stitches on round four. So now we can go on to round five. Let's slip stitch to the first stitch right here. So not this chain up one right there. We're gonna go into the first herringbone half double crochet, yarn over, pull through and through. And now we can go on to round five. We are going to chain up one and turn our work around. And we're going to work in this stitch first right here. You can kind of see the established repeat um, of increases now. So yarn over, we're going to go put two herringbone half double crochets in this first stitch. One and two. And now for round five, we are going to put one herringbone half double crochet in the next three stitches this round. Okay, so the previous round was just two and the one before that was just one. Now we're gonna put one in the next three. One, two, and three. 
okay so you can guess it the next one the next round will be four <laughs> and so on so now we're gonna repeat so put two to increase put two herringbone half double crochets in this next stitch and then one herringbone half double crochet in the next three stitches so one two and three okay and just repeat so at the end of round five we're going to have 45 herringbone half double crochet stitches so do that around I'll meet you up and we'll go on to round six all right just finishing round five here I just had to put my last three stitches in here and remember, do not forget that very last one. I know I said it in every round up until now, but just don't forget that one. Make sure that you have 45 stitches on round five. And then slip stitch to the first herringbone half double crochet stitch right here. Go in, yarn over, pull through, and through. All right. At this point, if you're making more of a, like a baby hat or more of like a... To, up to two years old I think that this is a good enough um, uh, of a crown of a hat so if you want to go on to the instructions for round 7 to 12 uh, you could do that and I'll put the hat measurements and everything in the notes section of the pattern so you can see how uh, tall your hat needs to be so you're done increasing at this point you can just work rounds 7 through 12 or if you want to end at round 11 and then go on to doing the ear flaps or whatever, however tall your hat uh, should be, you're done increasing at this point. But I need to do one more round. Uh, my nephew is um, more a little older, more of a child size, so we're going to go on to one more increase. So let's chain one and turn the work around. And we are going to increase one more time here. Let's put two herringbone half double crochets into this stitch here. So yarn over, go in there make two herringbone half double crochets in here one and two and then like I said last round for the increases for this round we're gonna put one herringbone half double crochet in the next of four stitches one next one two next one three and in the next stitch four Okay, and then just repeat that all the way around. So two herringbone half double crochets in the next stitch, one and two, and then one herringbone half double crochet in the next four stitches, one, two, three, and four and then just repeat. So do that all the way around and at the end of round six you'll have 54 herringbone half double crochet stitches. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll meet you up for round seven. All right just finishing my last stitch in this last area right here. Make sure not to forget that one. Um, we are going to have the 54 stitches at the end of this round so make sure you come back 54 and then we're going to slip stitch to this first herringbone half double crochet stitch so yarn over pull through and through and now since you know the established increase you can increase once more if you want to make an adult size or a teen size and then increase another time so increase two times for the large adult size just increase one more time for like a teen size um, but this is the size for a child so now we are going to chain up one and turn the work around okay and we're done increasing for this hat uh, for the demonstration that I'm going to show today so I'm just going to put one herringbone half double crochet in each stitch around for round seven and actually this is going to be for rounds seven through twelve Okay, so 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, that's six rounds. We are going to just put one herringbone half double crochet into each stitch around. And then we're going to slip stitch to the first stitch 
and then chain one, turn the work around. Don't forget to turn your work every round. And then herringbone half double crochet in each stitch around. And that's it. So I'm going to do that for rounds 7 through 12. Okay, when I'm finished with round 12, I will meet you up because we are going to change color. All right, just finishing round 12 here. Um, if you need to go on to doing more rounds, you can. But at this point, I'm going to just slip stitch to this first stitch here. And then we're going to fasten this color off. So to do that, I'm just going to chain one and then cut this yarn and then pull that all the way through and pull it tight. Okay, so at this point, you have just a mini hat. This is what it should sort of look like and I can measure this out right now it's about five and a half inches um, from the top to the bottom which is about 14 centimeters about 13 and a half centimeters so if you need to make that longer or um, shorter you can for the size you're making now we're going to go on to doing different stitches using the jade yarn okay this is the same type of yarn Dara Moore Studio Anti-Pilling Chunky and we are using the jade now so let me grab some of that here we go and we are going to start you can start in any stitch and we're going to just start right here in this stitch here okay right after our slip stitch there actually we're going to turn our work around sorry we're gonna oh yeah that is the right way sorry guys <laughs> make sure that your stitches you can see these lines across here like this so horizontally Okay, those lines there, you want to make sure you see those. On the inside, you can't see those at all. Okay, they're not right under that first line. Okay, but these ones have that one right there. Okay, so this is the side we're going to go on. We're going to go right into this stitch, or any stitch really, and we're going to hook on our new yarn and pull that through, and then chain one. And now we're going to actually be working different stitches around, okay? So we're not doing the herringbone half double crochet anymore. We're doing different stitches. And this stitch now is we're going to... All right, sorry about that. We had to chain one there. And then we're going to actually go into the very next stitch after the one that we just attached to. So right in this stitch here, go in. And then yarn over and pull through. And then we're going to go into the stitch that we just attached to. So to do that, we're going to kind of, I'm going to keep my thumb under here to keep this on. And we're going to go into that stitch, that previous stitch, then yarn over and pull that through. Okay, so then we have three loops on our hook. If you can see that, there we go, one, two, and three. Then yarn over and pull through all three of the loops. Okay, it's like a twisted, like crisscross single crochet. So we're going to do that all the way around. So I'll show you again. We're going to hop to this next stitch right here. Okay, the one that's next that's unworked. We're going to go into that one. Then yarn over and pull through. And then we're going to go into this previous stitch where this one looks like it's worked into. We're going to go underneath that in there and then yarn over and pull through. Okay, so then we have the three loops on the hook. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. And there's our next stitch. It's like a twisted stitch. Okay, I'll show you again. We're just going to do this all the way around for 54 of these stitches. So go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through, go into the neck or the previous stitch right here, then yarn over and pull that through. And then yarn over and pull through all three loops. Okay, just like that. So hop to the very next stitch right here, yarn over, pull through, go into the previous stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. So it's going to look like there's two stitches in each stitch because half of this stitch is in this stitch and half of this stitch is in the same stitch. So it's going to look like there's two stitches in each stitch, but the stitch turns out like a twisted side stitch it just looks really really cool 
So we're just gonna do that all the way around for a total of 54 stitches all the way around. So just keep repeating this all the way around and then I'll meet you up at the end of this round. Um, this is round 13 because I'll show you how to finish to make sure that you have your 54 stitches or all the stitches that you need on this round because um, finishing this round can be a little confusing. So I'm gonna do that and then I'll meet you up and we'll go on to round 14. All right, finishing this round, I have 53 stitches after this stitch that I'm making right now. But it looks like all the stitches are worked, but actually, where we put this first stitch right here, this chain of one right here, we still are gonna work a stitch in there. So go into there, yarn over, pull through, then go into our previous stitch, and then yarn over and pull through, and then yarn over and pull through all three of the loops. Okay, just like that. Now we're gonna slip stitch into the first stitch and if you need to count back 54 stitches, it should lead you to this stitch right here. Yarn over and pull through and then pull through the loop on your hook. And that's round 13. So this is what it should look like, okay? Now we need to do four rounds. Um, you could do four or five rounds of this. So we're not going to, I don't think I'm gonna be actually churning my work anymore. I'm just going to be chaining one and continuing on to this pattern. Now, um, let me untangle this real quick. The um, next stitch, this next round, round 14 now. So 14, 15, and 16 are going to be this repeat here. We're not gonna work in this stitch that we just uh, slip stitched and chained one in. We're gonna start in this next stitch right here. Then yarn over and pull through, and then we're gonna go into that stitch that we slip stitched into and chained up one in that previous stitch right there, then yarn over and pull through. And then yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook, just like that. That starts round 14. So then just repeat what we did for the last round. Just hop into this next stitch right here, yarn over, pull through, go into the previous stitch, yarn over and pull through. And you can't really see it very well, there you go. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. Okay, then hop to the next stitch and do this all the way around. You should still have the same 54 stitches all the way around, or the same amount of stitches, no increasing or decreasing at this point. So just do that um, and finish just like we did for uh, round 13, just finish it just like I showed you there. And we're gonna do that for rounds 14, 15, and 16. So the next three rounds I'm doing this. Um, so they'll have a total of four rounds of this. So just do that and then once we're finishing round 16, we can go on to making the ear flaps. All right, don't forget to always put your last stitch where your first stitch is started in, okay? So don't forget that. Make sure you always have your 54 stitches and slip stitch to the first stitch. Now, I just finished round 16, okay? I did rounds 13, 14, 15, and 16 here, just doing those stitches. That looks really cool. So now we can go on to making the ear flaps. So let's chain up one. And for the ear flaps, we are going to be using these stitches, okay? Because they're, they're gonna be a little bit different. We're gonna turn our work when we make these. So for the ear flaps, we are gonna skip this stitch here and we're gonna go into this stitch right here, then yarn over, pull through, and then go into that previous stitch right there, then yarn over and pull that through, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops for our first stitch. We're gonna make 10 of these in a row. So there was one. So go into the next stitch, yarn over, pull through. Go into the previous stitch, yarn over, pull through. And then yarn over and pull through all three loops. Ooh, there we go. Okay, so I'm gonna do that for 10 stitches. So that was one and two. Here's three. And four. Four and five. I'm gonna go a little bit faster here. Here's six. There we go. Seven. Eight. Nine. And 
and 10. Awesome. Now what we're going to do is leave the rest of these unworked. We're going to chain up one and turn our work so we're looking at the inside of the hat. And now we are going to do these crisscross um, kind of stitches that we've been doing all across here. So uh, go into not this first stitch right here, but go into this next stitch right here, yarn over, pull through, and then go into the previous stitch, okay, that very first stitch, yarn over and pull through, and then yarn over and pull through, oops, I didn't yarn over all the way, sorry, start over, into this stitch, yarn over, pull through, go into the previous stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. Okay, and then just skip this stitch right here, go into the next, and then back. And make your crisscross single crochet stitch. Go into the next, and then go into the previous. Okay, but on the second row of the ear flaps, we will only have nine stitches across, okay? Okay, so the first row had 10 stitches, and the second row will have nine stitches, and then each row after this will have um, subtract one stitch every row. Okay, so the next row will have eight, the row after that will have seven, six, five, and four, and we're gonna end at four here. So pull this through, we're ending this row right here. Okay, so as you can see, we don't have any more stitches. These stitches are worked in this row here. So we're done with this row. You can count here, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. So now going on to the third row, we're gonna chain up one, turn our work around, skip this first stitch here, go into this next stitch here, yarn over, pull through, go into the previous row, yarn or er, stitch, sorry, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Skip this stitch right here, this one is worked in there, so go into the next, yarn over, pull through, go to that previous stitch that we skipped, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three loops. And just keep doing this all the way across, and at the end of, like I said, at the end of row three, you will have eight stitches. And just keep repeating this until you have four stitches left. So there should be seven rows total of this ear flap. Okay, so I'm just gonna, you can see at the end of this row, see one, two, three, four. I'm gonna have four stitches to go here. Here's five, six, seven, and last one is right here, eight. Okay? That was row three. Now going on to row four of the ear flap, we're gonna chain one, turn our work, we're gonna look at the inside of our hat now, and we are going to repeat that. So skip this first stitch, go into this next one, and then go into that skipped stitch. Yarn over, pull through. There we go. Yarn over, pull through all three. So now on this row, row four, we will have seven stitches. So I'm gonna do that until row, I'm gonna do the same repeat till we get four stitches across. Okay, so I'm, I'm, when I'm finishing row seven of the ear flap, I'll meet you up, we'll fasten this ear flap off, and then we'll go on to the next ear flap. All right, I just finished row seven of the ear flap. They go pretty fast once you have less stitches for each row. So this is what it should look like. I have four stitches here, one, two, three, four. Okay, and that's the ear flap. Don't worry, we'll clean up these edges if they look a little jaggedy for you. So what we're going to do is chain one and cut this yarn and then pull that through, that chain one there, and pull it tight. Okay, now on our row, um, what is this, row 16 of these uh, stitches here, we're gonna skip 18 stitches, or if you want to, you could just fold this in half, just kind of like this, and kind of just mark stitches on the opposite side where you want your ear flap to start, okay? But I'm gonna count 18 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And that's where I'm gonna start. So I'm a little off. So we're just gonna scoot this this way. And we're going to insert our hook into that stitch, okay? You can skip 17 or 18 stitches. It really doesn't matter. And then we're gonna hook on this yarn and pull it through and then chain up one. 
All right, now we're going to start just like we did the other ear flap, okay? So we're gonna go into the next stitch right here, yarn over and pull through, and then go into the previous stitch that we just attached to, and yarn over and pull that through, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. Okay, and we're gonna do that for 10 stitches, so hop to the next unworked stitch right here, go in, I'm gonna work over the straggler here, yarn over, pull through, go into that previous stitch, yarn over and pull through, and then yarn over and pull through all three loops. So there's two, here's three, okay, four, and so on. So I'm going to do the 10 stitches. If you need to, at this point, just rewind this to the first ear flap on how I started it and how you have to do it, and um, just repeat this ear flap then the same exact way as the other ear flap. So once I'm finished with this second ear flap, I'll meet you up. Do not fasten this one off though, because we still have to work around the whole piece, and I'll meet you up at that point. All right, so I just finished my other ear flap here. I have the four stitches. I just repeated what we did for the first ear flap over here. Okay, so that should be even. Awesome. So now we are not going to fasten this off. We are going to work around this whole piece. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to chain one. And we are going to half double crochet all the way around. So a half double crochet, we yarn over go in to, let's go into this stitch right here. Okay, so yarn over, go in, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Just like that. Then we're going to just yarn over and work around, I'm gonna work down this side first, and then around this edge here. So basically wherever your hook fits, we're going to um, half double crochet. So yarn over, go in, wherever it fits, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Yarn over, go in, wherever it fits, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Okay, and we're just gonna do this all the way down this side, and then I'll get to this next point here, and I'll show you how to do it in the stitches, and then I'll leave you on your own to do the rest of this piece. So we're just going to half double crochet down this side, and then each side of the ear flaps will just be the same. Just wherever your hook fits is where you should half double crochet. Just like that. Okay, when you get to the point where you're back onto the stitches of the hat, just work in each stitch of the hat. And I'm almost to that point right here. Okay, so now we're working in each of these stitches here. We'll work over the straggler so it gets hidden. Okay, so in each stitch, just work a half double crochet. Just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna do that all the way around, and then when I get back to the top of this one right here where we're gonna fasten off, I'll meet you up, we'll fasten off together, and then start making the palm and tassels. All right, I just finished and I uh, cut my arm before I even fastened off, so we're gonna go into the first stitch right here. Okay, yarn over, pull through and through. And then to fasten off, I cut my yarn and I chain one and pull it all the way through, just like that, and pull it tight. And then grab the yarn needle right away, yarn the needle, and then go onto the inside of your hat and sew in that end and sew in any ends that you have um, that are loose on the inside of your hat before we make these tassels here. I'm gonna cut any extra stretch it out make sure that's hidden nicely okay cool so that is what it should look like now you can kind of see your seam right here not very it's not bad but you can kind of see it right here along this edge so that is the back of the hat so actually yeah that's the back here so just make sure if you flatten this out the front side you should see 
is just a little bit wider from this ear flap to this ear flap is just a little bit wider than this backside. This backside is a little bit shorter. Okay, so as you can see, this is the front of our hat. So now, I mean, you could just have a hat just like this, just plain and just have it just like that, but I wanna add some tassels and a little palm on top. So I'm gonna set this aside. I'm gonna grab those pieces of cardboard that I showed you earlier. We'll make a tassel first, okay? So we have to make two of them. I have one done already. You can see here we have the little tassel. So I'll show you how to make one of these. And if you like making tassels, you can check out my boho palm uh, hat and the boho tassel scarf. We use tassels in that. So I have this piece of cardboard here. It's just a small piece of cardboard, about four inches, okay? Four inches long and wide and uh, you don't need it to be too big. I did write a little ends here because I want my ends to all end on this side of the, of the cardboard. So what I'm gonna do is take two strands of my yarn. If you want it just solid colored palms or solid colored tassels, just use one color. But I'm gonna use the both colors in this tassel here. And we want our ends to meet up with the ends side, okay? Now we are going to wrap 15 times you can wrap as many times as you want but I'm gonna wrap 15 and from here all the way around to here is one wrap okay so there's one here's two three four try to keep it all in one here there's five six seven eight 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. Okay, so then we're going to cut that. We want it to end on the end side, so we're going to cut that short just like that. And then whatever color you want to use for your tie here, this tie here and this tie here, choose one of the colors. Okay, so I have the teal or jade Color. And we're going to cut a strand that's short, about, I would say, 8 inches or 12 inches, okay? And then we're going to cut a longer one that's about 24 inches, okay? So um, one long and one short, okay? We're going to use the short one first. What we're going to do is go up in here, okay? on one side of this, slide this through to the other side, okay, and we're going to slide it up to the top, okay, not the ends side where it says ends down there, don't tie it down there. We're going to tie it at the top here in a knot, and we're going to pull really tight, okay, and so it's going to be double. Just like that okay we're gonna tie this part to the hat okay now what we're going to do is slide this off of our cardboard okay you can keep your finger in there if you want to and then what we're going to do we have some ends here that we have to figure out okay so we want to I'm just gonna hold it down with one hand. It's nice if you do have extra hands to have somebody help you, but if you don't, no big deal. You can just kinda be careful with your scissors and just chop this end, just like that. So all your ends are all cut. And then take that longer strand and go up to the top where this is tied, okay? And we're going to set this on there Okay, have one side short and then the rest of your yarn on one side here and bring this around. Okay, and we're going to tie this in a knot. Just at the top. You want to make it look good, so make sure you shape it nicely. Everything looks good before you pull it really tight. Okay, and then pull it as tight as you can without breaking your yarn, and then tie it in another knot. Okay, we're not done yet. We're going to hold this down. Okay, I'm going to wrap the short one around 
to secure it. And then this longer one is the one we're going to wrap with. Okay, and we're just going to wrap it around that section. And I just want to hide that strand. And just make it look decent. And I'm running out, so at this point we have to sew in this end. So what I like to do is hold this down, yarn my needle, okay, then go up into, up underneath this right here, and pull it through, and then go back down through this little strap here, this little band, go back down into it, just like that and then that's blended in with the rest. Now, you can see that's kind of uneven, which is totally fine. We're going to give it a little trim. So let's, you can even pull some of these down if you want to, kind of make it look good. And then pull it back up to make it more popping. You can adjust it how you need to. It looks pretty good. Okay, so it's not all going to be super perfect, but we want this to get a little haircut. So we're just going to hold this like this and be super careful with your scissors and just trim. Trim it all to be mainly one size, like one length. If you have a couple of that are like a little off, no big deal. That should be good. Okay, and then just throw those away. And there you have a tassel. Okay, so we have two tassels, you have to make another one, okay, and that should be how it should look. They look really good. So once you have both tassels finished, you can grab your hat, and we are going to attach these. So we are going to go in from the outside, just through these stitches here, with one strand, okay, and then the other strand we're just going to tie on the inside. and just tie it in a knot just like that okay and then we're going to grab our yarn needle and just sew in both of these ends into our hat underneath these stitches okay and I'm going to sew it in even more, just so that it is fully secure. There we go. Stretch it out, pull it tight, and then cut any extra that you may have. And make sure those are hidden. Awesome, so there's one tassel. So now I'm gonna attach the other tassel and then we can go and make the palm. All right, so I just attached uh, the other palm here. So now we have to make a little palm for the top here. So I'm gonna make it differently than these tassels. We're not gonna have a tassel on top. We're gonna have an actual like ball palm. So that's why I have these two pieces of cardboard. Now I'm gonna set this aside and if you have um, two pieces of cardboard, I'll show you how to make a palm. If you have a legit um, palm maker, that's awesome, and I need one, <laughs> and um, you can make a palm. Now I'm going to just do it simply, uh, similarly to the tassels. We're going to have our ends on the outside here, okay? And I'm just going to wrap around this cardboard. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to use my other one. I have a different palm maker that makes bigger palms. This one my dad made me. It's way cooler. So I'm going to use this one. Um, I'm just going to wrap around just like this. And we're going to wrap all the way around this whole circle here. Okay, so I'm just going to keep wrapping just like this. So once I get to this side here, all the way around, I'll meet you up and I'll show you what to do next. 
All right, so I wrapped all the way around and it ended up coming partially back uh, this way too, um, just because I want my palm to be really big. Uh, so you can wrap as many times as you need to to make more um, palm, more palm, <laughs> make it bigger. So now we're going to cut our yarn there and we're going to have a long strand of one of the colors. I just have this much left of the yarn skein for the light blue color, the, um, what was this color called again? I'm losing it. <laughs> The cornflower, sorry. So I'm using um, this rest of this yarn on this one. So what we're going to do, you'll, you'll need a long strand. We're going to spread these two pieces of cardboard apart and just go in between them like that. Okay, and have half of it on one side and half of it on the other side. Then what we're going to do, it's easy to do this on a tabletop, we're going to cut these strands just to have the ends all cut like this one here. So we're going to go in between the two pieces of cardboard and then just trim those strands. Okay, and we're going to do that all the way around, but it's easy to do it on a tabletop because then you can kind of push this down and keep everything secure so no pieces, no little scraps are flying everywhere. Okay. So I'm going to cut all the way around, and as you're cutting, make sure to trail this along here, okay? So we have that securing everything. So just every so often, just keep pulling it, but just do not cut this strand because we are going to need to tie it off with that. So just keep cutting and then moving this down, and then pushing it down onto the, the table so that you don't have any loose strands everywhere. Okay, and just keep cutting and do that all the way around and then I'll meet you up and show you how to tie this together. Alright, so I cut every piece here. Now I'm just going to trail this along here. Okay, we're going to be very careful now because some of these strands are coming a little loose. So we just want to make sure that we have both strands all good. And what we're going to do now is tie these two together to make sure everything is secure and if one of your sides is a little shorter than the other you can kind of gather everything in the middle tie this together a little tighter you can take one off and see how this side is kind of short on the palm and that side super long so you want to kind of just push this down on these strands. You can kind of grab them, slide this lower, just make sure that it is even on both sides before you tie this. Okay. And you can even remove the other one and see that it is still not even. Just be super gentle with it because you don't want it to be, you know, go everywhere or fly everywhere. So that's just the hard part with, um, you know, a homemade palm maker is that you might not get exactly halfway between these strands and then it might fall apart. So. I'm just going to tie it and then I'll just cut those other strands. See how long these strands are? We're, oh, and some of them are falling out. So <laughs> I'm obviously having a hard time. So we want to make sure that we tie this really super tight so nothing else falls out. And I might end up making another one. There. So tie it really tight. And then tie it in a knot. And then there we go. You're going to have to hold these two strands together just like this. You can't really even see my knot anymore. There it is. So I have a knot right there. You can tie it twice or three times and then just hold it up like this. Get all these strands, the strands that fell out. Some of these strands are just falling out. There we go. Okay. Now this thing needs a haircut. <laughs> Big time. So we're going to cut the longer strands first. and kind of try to salvage this palm. Obviously I'm not a professional palm maker, so no judging here, but 
I'll work with this, and if I need to make another one, I'll make another one. But that's essentially how you make a palm. And you know what? There's better t tutorials out there on how to make a palm, so if you need help on how to make one, or just get an actual palm maker. You know what? I'll put a link in the description of this video where you can get your own palm maker, and I think I'm going to invest in one because I'll be... This is not looking so great, and that's a really floppy palm. So... I'm going to cut some more, just don't cut it too short, but and be super careful with your scissors. I know I said it a couple times in this tutorial already, but I just want you guys to be super careful because I have cut myself a few times in the past, so I'm speaking from experience. Just cut and then take a break, check it out, see if it looks good. If you want your palm to be super floppy like this, it's actually kind of cute. Then we just need to trim a few of these loose ends here, just to make it more even. It's actually really cute. Awesome. So I'm going to give this a little bit more of a haircut, and then I'll show you how to attach. Alright, I trimmed it down a little better, and I think I'm really happy with how it looks. So what we're going to do now is attach it. So take those two long strands that you have and go to the top of your hat, and you can even grab your hook and hook one of the strands, one of the long strands, through, and then hook the other long strand through. Sorry, I know you can't really see that that way. There we go. So I hooked one in and one in on the other side of round one. And I'm going to pull that down really tight. And then we're going to look at the inside of our hat down here. And we're going to tie these two on the inside of our hat really tight in a knot. And you can tie it twice or three times. And then just take your yarn needle and let's sew in these ends underneath the stitches of round one or wherever wherever you want to sew them in and that should be it so there it is this awesome hat is complete make sure to check out the links in the description of this video so you can see the written pattern and all the information about it there it is this is the back side. And when you see the seam here, you should see that this is the back side of the hat. So this is the front side. And the palm looks fantastic right now. <laughs> there. <laughs> there it is. Thanks so much for watching. Big thank you to Dare Morse for providing the yarn for this project today. And big thank you to my dad for filming and editing this video and for doing the photos. Thanks to my nephew for modeling. He's so adorable. And thanks to you for watching. I'll see you next time. Happy hooking!